Okay, what's the verdict? What's the verdict here? What I mean, this what would we have to do in an instance like this? We would have to okay, but but we'd have to set this up as a limit, right? We'd have to start general and then get specific. So we'd have to take this as a like a limit of you take your pick of how you want to express the difference quotient. But this big function up here is going to start to get a little bit ugly when you're having to do, you know, like for example, say we use the delta x definition, right? You're going to have to do f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Well, that's, you know, that's going to get ugly, right? You're going to have to do some expansion of x plus delta x to the fourth, x plus delta x cubed, et cetera, et cetera, right? There, there's some stuff going on there. So we want to come up with, by the end of the day, we will look at this and just laugh. It'll be so simple. We'll just laugh. Seriously, this will be nothing. <laughs> I promise you, this is a piece of cake. We're going to come up with something called the generalized power rule for derivatives that is going to save the day. There's a, there's a really quick uh, standard form of derivatives that we'll be able to apply. We'll be able to look at this and just say, okay, well, the answer is this. Okay? All right, so what is that? Well, let's start off with, let's start off with something like this. Let's just say that we want to... We're going to start off, yeah, I'm going to make this a little, I don't know why the book doesn't do this. We'll do one thing a little different than the book. So what if we want to take the derivative of some constant times x to the n? We're just going to take the derivative of a power function, right, x to some power. Okay, well, we're going to have to, and remember, this is some of our new, this is some of our new, uh, the way that we use notation, just for derivative notation. What does that mean? It means we're going to differentiate this stuff, take the derivative of this stuff, right? And so this is going to equal a, a limit, right? We're going to take the derivative of this function. This is going to equal, I'm going to leave a little bit of space here for us to write down the very general derivative rule at the top first. So let's go ahead and just use the delta x definition this time. That one works really well for us in this case. So what does that look like as a limit of, of the difference quotient using delta x's? Limit of minus f of x as OK, good. So then that's all we're doing, right? for this function. What is our specific function here then, in this case, that we're differentiating? Yeah, c x to the n, right? That's the function that we're differentiating, okay? So let's get specific then. What is this part? We'll color code this. What is this part now? Okay, c times the quantity x plus delta x <coughs> to the n, right? We agree? f of hand just equals c times hand to the n, okay? Minus, that's a new color, try that one. f of x is just that, right? All divided by delta x is delta x goes to zero. Well, we can do one thing to make things a little simpler right away. Is there a common factor there right away? C, and C is a constant, isn't it? Right? So I could rewrite this as the limit of C times the quantity x plus delta x to the n minus x to the n over delta x as delta x goes to 0. And what have we said from the start is that there's a really useful property of limits. If I'm taking the limit of a constant times a function, what can I do with the constant? Put it out in front. Put it out front. Yeah, we can, we can pull it out in front of the limit, right? So the c can end up there. Well, that's good. Okay, so that helps us a bit. Then we end up with c 
And a lot of times what I'll do when I'm working on calculus stuff where there's a lot going on is I'll just open up, that's a pretty crappy script bracket, but I'll open up a set of script brackets, which just means all this stuff, the C is out front of everything until we choose otherwise, right? Everything else we'll just, we'll put inside these script brackets and that's where we're working, okay? Okay, so then what's this going to look like? If I have x plus delta x to the n, that's, we don't know what n is, right? So expanding that is going to be impossible to do exactly. We have some options, though. You remember the binomial expansion from last year? Probably not. But the binomial expansion is just the logical extension of Pascal's triangle, right? It's Pascal's triangle where we're not going to have a finite number of rows. We're going to have a row that just rep with n, the nth row. What would it look like? I never remember what it is. I have to always reinvent the wheel for myself for binomial expansion. I don't want to waste those brain cells remembering it. But we, don't, we can look at this in maybe a little bit of a simpler way. Let's go back to Pascal's triangle for a second, and let's just figure out what the pattern is. So we can write out, we can write out what, the, what the nth row of Pascal's triangle is going to look like. You know, with just some dot, dot, dots in there, where we can say, okay, there's a pattern here. This is what's going on, dot, 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 forever, you know, which or whatever n is. Does that make sense? Right? We're trying to expand out a binomial, x plus delta x, to some power n. We don't know what n is, so we have to be able to write a general expression in terms of n, right? So we're looking for a pattern coming out of Pascal's triangle that we can extrapolate to the nth power. Okay? That's a better way of saying it. That makes sense? All right, so let's do that. So let's go back and give us a little extra practice with Pascal's triangle, too. All right, so let's write down, let's write down when 10 equals 0. That's going to be, I'll start, that's just 1, right? n equals 1. Those are our coefficients. 2, what do we get? Okay, three is what? Okay, let's do, we'll do a few of them so we can really see a pattern. One, one four, four, six, four, one. Okay. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. Let's do one more. Let's go six. One, one, one six, 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 fifteen, twenty, fifteen. Okay, so our goal then is if we can write down the nth, we'll go down to the nth row, we want to know what those are going to be in terms of n, right? So, go. Use your vast brain, talk amongst yourselves here, and see if you can see a pattern. We want to know what's, first, we know what the first one's going to be, don't we? One. One. But now what? Right? So I want you to... You already got the first part, don't you? Yeah, look at this diagonal. Look at this, right? If we just follow this down, what do you notice? It's n, right? So the next one is going to be n. Then what? Okay, see if you can... Let's see if you can come up with something. I'm not going to tell you right away. I want to see if you guys can see the pattern. This is kind of good thinking. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I want you to I want you to think about it for just a second. Oh. Do you think you got it? I always got my numbers. I think so. I think I know it. Okay. Share with your buddies out there. Diagonally on the next row is diagonal the so are you did you, you got suggestions? How am I gonna predict for row two that I get a one there, and for row three that I get a three there, and for row four that I get a six there? It's the data What is it again? The 
previous, okay. But we gotta say that in terms of n. Okay. That's that's what makes it a little bit tricky. Right? Now sometimes what helps, this is this is a the reason I'm having you do this is because it's kind of a, a cool process. It's called mathematical induction. You want to see if you can if you can make a prediction like a loop if by knowing the previous term if you can predict the next term, right? If that's all, really it doesn't matter. We want to be able to say, based on, uh, based simply on what that is, and that is, can I make a you know? And this is over here. Can I make a prediction for what you know? Based on that, can I make a prediction for what that's going to be? Right. Let's do it this way. Let, let, let's make, let's take this picture and let's make it into, let's make a table out of this. And sometimes that helps. Okay. I'll show you what I mean. So if we go, I did the pen. Let me take a picture. Here's what we have. Let's make a little table here. So we know what n is, right? And we're trying to figure out what the third column is, right? So let's just put third, okay? So when n is So when n is 1, we get back <coughs> 1. When n is, sorry, when n is 2, we have to start at 2, don't we? When n is 2, we get 1. When n is 3, we get 3. When n is 4, we get 6. When n is 5, we get 10 for a third term. When n is 6, we get 15. We can add more columns to this too. N plus. Okay. It's hard to say the third row though. That doesn't just that doesn't just roll off the tongue in terms of uh, in terms of an expression, right? Let me give you a hint. What if we add another column here for n plus 1? What's n, if n is 2, what's n plus 1? Okay. Uh, 4. What's this? What's this one? Uh, 5. Okay. 6. Seven. Okay, there's one possibility. Okay. Let's try one while we're at it. Let's put one up there for n minus one. So that's going to be a one. That's going to be a two. That's going to be a three. That's going to be a four. That's going to be a five. One of those columns is not going to be useful. Sometimes it's good to look at n in terms of the preceding and following integers. If we needed to, we could add columns for n plus 2 and n minus 2. Can you see a way to make a connection between some columns now that's going to, that's going to predict this output? That can do the same. Say it again. No, here, I'll tell you what. Let's just, this one's not going to be useful this time. Oftentimes it is, but this time it's not. Look at the other two. Look at n minus 1 and n. Can you figure out a way to, to get this output from the other two numbers? But the same way every time. The algorithm that's going to work for all rows. Okay, Julie. Oh, you came up, and I figured they would Oh, my, 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 my
Oh, from TJ. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to need that. So. You're not going to need that. I had it on a Google Doc and I all wanted a hard copy, so I just need it. <laughs> oh. I thought I was doing, you know. 21st yeah. teaching, and it's on the computer, and they're like, yeah, no, we just want a paper. So, <laughs> so, you, so you don't need a dress in it? Oh, okay, all right. Thank you for bringing it down. So what do you think? You got to figure out, can you figure out a way to do it? Richard's got an idea. Instead of, like, the car right column be there, we change it to F of N. Sure. Let's call it F of N. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. That's much more mathematical than that. Then we say the F of N is. What do you propose it is? N minus 1 plus the function of N minus 1. So that plus what? Oh, plus this? OK. OK. It's true. And then you could use recursive analysis, possibly. That's a good idea. There's an easier way to do it, though. That's really clever. But there's an easier way to do it. You can do it just using the hint I'm going to give you. You want to use the easiest possible way. You can use it with just that column and that column. Hello. You think about it, You can look at differences, sums, products. Quotients are tough a lot of times. What's the product of the oh, You think you see it? N minus 1 times N is always 2 times N. Ah, OK. Right. Let's make another column for a second. Let's make another column here. Uh, these columns are all out of order. So don't assume that they're, you know, they were, oops. Uh, don't assume that the order of the columns is important because it's not. They're, it's all screwed up. They're all out of order. But look at. Look at what happens if we make another column here that's n minus 1 times n. What do we get? 10 minus 1 times n is, or times n is 2, two 6, six twelve, 20, 30. Ah, well, look at the difference. f of n is always half of that product, right? So now, what is f of n. n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Divided by 2. Aha. That works, doesn't it? Right? You see the, right? Do you have to do that? No. I mean, I just wanted you guys to think about this a little bit. But that's what the next column, that's the pattern we're getting out of that, right? So if we use, this will be our yellow diagonal, right? The yellow diagonal is giving us, for my next term, it's going to be predicted by n times n minus 1 over 2. And it gets harder. I don't know how much more time we really want to spend on this because we want to get to the answer. But real quick, does anybody see a way that you could do something like that to get this diagonal? Um, yeah. You can like add up all the previous numbers and have a diagonal row right above it. So like for the 1 at the top, you just add the 1. Mm -hmm. And then for the 4, you add the 3 and the 1. How'd you get the four then? I don't see how you got the four. It's like right? the no. three right above the it. Three and the one, one, one above it. And going up diagonally. And it's the same thing with the one plus four. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got you. Okay. So you, that, that, would be a, that, that would be another way of saying it recursively, where you're defining y in terms of y. And then you'd have to go solve for y algebraically. That is a way you could coax the answer out that way, but it's, there's a little bit of a process. Can you just see a direct, in terms of like, in terms of things like, let's say, n minus 1 and oh, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I don't want to spend a lot of time. I just want to see if anybody just latches on. It's highly unlikely. It's, it's a little complicated. But. The, yeah, the purple one. It's pretty tough. Would the next one be 35? The next one, let's see, it'd be 2, Well, like the next one in that sequence. Oh boy, it's going to be n times yeah. n. 
So it's going to be, well, you said 35? It's just for the next one in the sequence. In the purple. In the purple. Down here. That, that's all I'm just saying. Like yeah. for N of it's 17. It's 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 I, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. That's, that's so you would get, let's see, it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. It would be. Mm -hmm. It would be 35. Do you, do you see an algorithm for that? No, I was just doing the I was just you were seeing some patterns up there. So, you, and, and you could, I just don't want to take more time on it, but you could, I mean, you could, given enough time, if you sat down with this, it's kind of a fun puzzle, you could find ways, even in terms of these little patterns you're seeing, because if this, if this row is n, then this row is just n minus 1, right? That's the n minus 1th row and the n minus 2th row, etc. You could come up with a, with a pattern that way. This one's... If we could have made tables on this one, and it would have worked. Because if I had made a table that said n minus 1 and n minus 2 and n, we could have done a product here that would have said n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and you would have seen a similar connection to what we did here. Given enough time, I mean, we, we would have figured this out, too. I just want to take the time. Here's what we get, though. We just get, we get something like this we get something like the next one's going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 6, I believe. That's it, isn't it? i got to look here. But if we write that as, let's write it instead as, instead of a 6, let's write it as 2 times 3. Right. Now maybe you can see just a pattern coming out of this, because this is really just divided by uh, 1. Right. Is the previous one the derivative of that one? No, no. What's the next one going to be? Yep. Okay. Okay. Etc. And now we can see how we could just continue that list as far as we wanted to, right? Okay, that's helpful though. Because look, look what this does. So I'm going to take this picture, and we'll go back to the previous page. Okay. So we get So if that's the expansion we get then, what is this going to look like? Right? Think what those meant. Right? What those mean in Pascal's triangle, remember, the first number is going to be times the, the first term in the binomial expansion to the n. Right? So for example, let, let's write one of these out. Like Let's just say, let's take this row right here. What this means is that a plus b to the fourth equals a to the fourth plus four a cubed b to the one plus six a squared b squared, right? A's are stepping down by one. The exponents are stepping down by increments of one. Powers of b are stepping up by increments of one as we as we move along the chain of coefficients from left to right. Okay, that's how we use Pascal's triangle, right? So then what's this telling us about this expansion right here? Because really this is what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to take that stuff and expand it for n terms, right? So then isn't that just going to look like we've got a limit down here, right? We've got a limit of a bunch of stuff, but this part of the stuff based on this expansion is what? That's my a, so I get x to the n, right, plus, but there's my coefficient, right, plus n times x to the n minus 1, n minus one times delta x to the, that's b, that's b, right, so just delta x, right, to the 1 plus my next coefficient, which is n 
times n minus 1 over 2 x to the times delta x squared, let's do one more, plus next term, times n over, and that's going to be, so this is times x to the times to the third, good, because they all, remember, these all have to just add up to n, don't they, right, because this is the nth row, okay, etc. meaning dot, 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 so all that stuff minus x to the n, right, minus all divided by delta x as delta x goes to zero. Okay, what do you notice about that? Something okay, really important is happening there. Say it again, Lil. X to the n. X to the n cancels. What we call the naked term. The only term that doesn't have delta x is cancels, right? It cancels horizontally, so it cancels to zero. That solves everything, doesn't it? Because now, think about this strategically, right? <clears throat> you always have to kind of keep, <clears throat> this is a whole different level of analytical thinking compared to the stuff you've done in the past. You, you're trying to simultaneously do hard math, right? So you've got to keep your focus on executing the right steps, but you also want to kind of keep one foot in, the other, in another place where you're thinking strategically about, okay, how, how should this process progress? Right, strategically, what am I trying to accomplish? Because it's really easy when you get doing really hard math, as math you know, continues to get more complex, to just get completely lost in a, a sea of algebra. And this happened to me countless times in college, where 30, 30 pages of algebra later, I go back and think to myself, why am I doing this? What am I looking for? I could have stopped 10 pages ago. This is not, you know, this was all unnecessary, right? I, what we're trying to do is to get that delta x to cancel. Isn't it? Trying to remove the indeterminacy, the zero over zero nature of the limit, correct? And the zero on the bottom is a delta x, so I've got to cancel those factors. Well, we got everything we need now, don't we? Right? Let's rewrite this and you'll see the answer pop out in this step. So we get, thank you for the sound of that. <laughs> when we get our answer, we got to get that, we got to repeat that. So now we get the limit of what could I do with the remaining terms on the top? Take it. Delta X out. Take a delta x out, right? So we're going to factor out a delta x from the top, leaving us with what? What's that? Nx n minus to the n minus one. Good. Plus n times n minus one over two x to the n minus two delta x, right, so that one gives us that term. Let's just do one more and that ought to be enough. Plus, how about this big one? Oops, minus, minus one, there we go. n minus two over six times x to the n minus three delta x to the squared. What do you notice about the powers of delta x, though? They're one less. They're, they're, well, the, the powers of delta x are increasing, aren't they? Right? So then, this is all over delta x. So I can vertically cancel those delta x's, right? Cancels out. Cancels out. Because now if I take my limit, if I evaluate the limit as delta x goes to zero, look how beautiful this is there. All of these other terms, they were unnecessarily, sorry, yeah, you're fine. Just you were, they were unnecessarily complicated, weren't they, right? Uh, they've got, yeah, we figured out all these fancy patterns, but it turns out it was all for naught. 
all of these guys are going to go to zero guaranteed because every other of these n terms <coughs> is just going to have an increasingly large power of delta x, so they're all going to go to zero. So what's our answer? Nx to the nx minus Yeah, so we get c times nx to the n minus 1. How about that? So we have, what's the product of all that hard work? We get a formula that's going to work every time, right? We can jump right from here down to our answer, which is written in terms of x's and n's, right? That makes sense? Okay, so in summary, I, just had, I, I don't want to send you late, but here we've got to finish this last step. So the derivative with respect to x of cx to the n is always cnx to the n minus 1. What do we do? Well, we just took this n and we multiplied the constant by n. It became a coefficient. <laughs> and we subtracted 1 from the exponent. That's our trick for taking derivatives of power. Right? Works every time. How easy does that make? So we could go back and we'll do this tomorrow at the start of class. That problem's a piece of cake. They're just all powers, right? Okay, off you go. Wait, but that, do you do it separately? Yeah, right. And then you just, okay. Okay, and that's the other part we wanted to just briefly discuss, but we'll hit that tomorrow.